Hey, well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Superhero Sunday. How are we doing today, Legacy Church? Oh, yeah, we can work. We can work with that. Uh, so if you are a guest this morning, you are in for a very special Sunday. I am so happy to have Legacy Kids in here. We're switching. We're, we're, they're taking over today, and they're going to be leading us in worship. And I'm so excited about that. Uh, but I will say... If you are an active member here at Legacy Church and you're thinking, I didn't sign up for this, and you're thinking about sneaking out, I just need you to know that you will be John Wick style excommunicadoed, okay? That's just what the bylaws say, so you're not allowed to leave. Uh, but I know, I, I am I'm so, so happy that you are here. One very quick moment of celebration, and then we're going to get the party started. How many of you guys were at the Sunken Gardens last Sunday for our Trunk or Treat event? Raise them up, raise them up. It was such an amazing time. I was, ah, it just, it was incredible. Um, I'm going to talk a little more about that, but we have a very short video kind of celebrating. Uh, ABC Church had a drone, which is amazing. And so this is a really short video, but I want you to check this out just in case you somehow missed it. I don't know if you did, but you could also be looking for yourself. But let's check this out and celebrate uh, last Sunday together. Sounds like you were thinking about clapping. There you go. Can we praise God? And can we have a huge round of applause to all of our volunteers, all of our vehicles, and of course, Legacy Church, Atascadero Bible Church, Father's House, and Gospel Chapel. Did I do them all? Okay, good. Another round of applause for that. Oh, man. We, we think, we don't exactly know, but we think there was around 3,000 people. Is that fair to say? 50. You know what? That's right. There was a million people there. It was definitely bigger than last year. And it was just, I just really want to commend all of you. It was such an incredible event. I had, uh, it's just, it was, you know what? Today's not my day. I can talk more about Trunk or Treat next Sunday if I want to. Um, but we're about to get started. But I need you guys, so I need some help. Can, can, we, can we do some, some round of applause on our knees really quick? I need help. As we introduce the amazing, the awesome, the inimitable Pastor Kirkley Peterson! You know, I didn't really ever thought I was rock star status until that entrance right there. So I really appreciate it. Hey, today is Kids Church in Big Church, which is also Superhero Sunday. We're very excited you were here today. So as Pastor Kerr already mentioned, you can't leave. Uh, in about 15 seconds, the doors will be secured. Emergency exits will not work. It's just don't tell the fire marshal uh, that. But uh, you're, here is some key things I want to tell you. We like to have fun in kids' church. We like to learn through fun. We like to learn through motion. We like to worship through motion. And so today, today, you get a rare treat. You know that song, if I could turn back time, right? You guys heard that? Right? No? You've, Emily's never heard that song before? That's fair. That's fair. All right. Today, you just didn't turn your clocks back an hour. You actually get to turn back your, your uh, biological clock. All right? By some of you... <laughs> Some of you, some of you only have to go back a few years. Some of you are going to crank that wheel, all right? You're going to crank that wheel and you're going to come, you're going to, you're going to be a kid again. You get, right? Just like, just crank it. Just, and you're eventually you're like, my arm's tired. I'm stopping here. My, no, you got more to go. You got more to go. So I want you to be a kid today, which means when my team's up here and we're worshiping and we're moving, you know what? Stand up and have some fun. Look, look, look. 
Chuck, where are you at, Chuck? Chuck is here. Chuck was like one of three people who wore a costume last week to, to uh, costume set, kooky costume center, right? Do you guys see that? I'm standing back there, I'm like, who is that? The, I need you to embody that today. Have some fun. Have some fun. Like, don't worry about what your neighbor thinks, all right? I don't, all right? You're weird. Roll with it. All right, it's okay. So, now I understand that's a big transition. Going, I thought we were going to learn about, I don't know, something out of Leviticus today. And that does sound fun. That does sound fun. But, today we're going to learn about about the power of the gospel. And I'm going to give you 56 seconds to transition your mindset into that of a child. Can you do it? It's, some of you need a lot more, but I only have 56 seconds. And you ask, why 56 seconds? Well, that's because that's the length of the song that I put to the timer. It went, 60 seconds wouldn't have worked. There'd be like this awkward four seconds of dead space, and then the song kicked on. So, are you ready? Are you ready for your 56 second countdown? Are you ready for some fun? All right, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to start. God, thank you for today. Thank you for kids' church and big church. Thank you today that we could talk about the power of the gospel. We get to have fun. We get to worship you. We get to learn from your word. Thank you. You bring us to this house where we have family and we have friends. We just look forward to all that you're going to do in our life today during this service through we sharing your word and through song, Lord. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. All right, 56 seconds. Have some fun, guys. Time to hear a walk. Everyone, we have a couple of quick rules we wanted to run over with you. Rule number one, keep your mouth closed when a leader is talking or if you're chewing egg salad. What? No, we keep it closed so that we can listen to what God's trying to say to us. Rule number two, our hands and feet are to be kept close in. That's right. Just imagine you're a T-Rex. Keep those arms real close. No, we keep our hands and feet close so that we aren't distracting to our friends. And finally, rule number three, smile big. That's right, flash those pearly whites. Un unless you have moldy cheese teeth. In that case, just keep it closed. Let's just follow the rules, okay?
All right, we got to play a game. So uh, we are playing a superhero themed game, which is a lot of fun. So I need some contestants. I need some participants. All right, uh, uh, Chucky, Chucky, uh, sure, Chucky, come on up here. All right, come on, come up here, my friend. All right, this is very easy. Come here over. You're gonna stand right here. All right, and let's let's. You want to pick anyone else to come up with you today? He said no. He doesn't want anyone else. All right. Do you want your brother or your sister? Uh, Royce. 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 Come here, Royce. Royce, where are you? All right, Royce. You're gonna help. All right. Now, what I like to do is I like to put, when we do our kids' church and big church, we like to pit adults versus kids, all right? So usually we start with arm wrestling, then we move to cage fighting, and we end up at trivia. But I'm going to skip those two, and we're going to just go straight to trivia. Okay? Is that okay? All right. All right. So let's see. Rosie, where's Rosie? Rosie, I need you to find two adults. Two adults. And you know what? Rosie, they don't have to be willing. They can be just two adults, okay? All right, we're going to find our contestants right now. She's searching. She's looking. Oh, she went straight for her dad. And looking. She's running around. She's looking. She's looking. She's looking for someone. Is it too dark, Rosie? Do you need glasses? Who'd you find? She went the entire lap and she found... Oh, she went... All right, there we go. I should have seen that coming. All right, so... Here is the game, very simple, up on screen. It is a Marvel versus DC. All you have to do is guess, is guess, what are they, is it Marvel or is it DC, all right? So all you gotta do is Marvel, DC. So you're gonna stand right here in the middle. All right, we're gonna play quick 10 rounds. They're gonna be quick 10 rounds. All right, now here's the cool thing. All right, yeah, you gotta really size them up, all right? There we, oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, go for it. All right, I like it. I like it. This is this is what ministry to children is all about, Austin. That's what I like. All right, all right. So here's what we're gonna do. All right, there we go. I appreciate that. All right, we're gonna put a character from the comic books up on screen. All you have to do is move to one side of the stage or not. Okay, or the other. All right. So we're gonna go with our first one right now. Our first one is Iceman. Is it DC or Marvel? Go ahead. You got three seconds to pick a side. That side's DC, this side's Marvel. Now, if you're on the audience, you can play along. You're just going to need to keep your own score, all right? Your own score. You ready? All right, go. Pick a side. Marvel or DC? You got to go. <laughs> That's not in this universe. You're staying at DC. You're moving to Marvel. All right, what's the answer? The answer is Marvel. All right. All right, good job. Point. All right. Now, I don't know if I told you this. This is very important. When playing against children, my number one rule is you cannot let them win. All right? You can't. So I'm going to assume you just didn't know, but okay. All right. All right, you guys ready? All right, back to the middle, back to the middle. Round two. Round two is right here. Spider-Man, DC or Marvel? All right, what is it, guys? Oh, David, you're hurting me. The answer is it's Marvel. It's not both, Caden. It's not both. It is not. I can't with you right now. All right, right here in the middle. All right, round three. All right, so far you guys are in the points. You're in the lead with two versus one. All right, here we go. It does get harder. Dr. Fate. DC or Marvel. Oh. They do know. Uh, what do you guys think? DC. The answer is DC. All right, good job. All right, you guys get another point. So far, you're still ahead by one. Back to the middle. Back to the middle. All right, our next round four, the invisible woman. The invisible woman. Is it DC or is it Marvel? All right, what do you, you don't have, you can be your own person, Austin. You can choose whichever side you want. What would you like to do? All right. Uh, all right, all right, all right, we're locking it in. Three, two, one, the answer is, it's Marvel. It's pretty impressive. All right, it's okay. All right, oh, by the way, the, also, when you're against adults, you can't let them win either, okay? You can't let them win, I'm sorry, it's the rules. All right, back to the middle, back to the middle. Here we go, next one. Blue Beetle. 
Blue Beetle, is it DC or Marvel? Go, you got five seconds. Austin's confused. He's really struggling here. All right, they made their choice. The answer is, it's DC. Good job, you guys are up. You guys are up by another point. All right, you feeling confident? All right, here we go, next one, back to the middle, back to the middle. Gambit. Gambit, you got five seconds, go. <laughs> oh, all right, Ch hey Chucky, hey, you, you, you be you, my friend, you be you. All right, you ready? And the answer is, ah, oh. your, your mom totally st steered you wrong, my friend. All right, it's okay, Chucky, you can talk to her later about that. All right, back to the middle, we got a couple more rounds, you guys are doing really good right now. Oh, by the way, the winner gets candy. Wasp, is it Marvel or DC? All right, she's, what does she have to lose? Austin, you good? All right, locking in, three, two, one, it's Marvel. That's a good job. All right, it's okay. All right, back to the middle. Let's do, let's do, uh, we have two more? Let's do two more, two more. Choose the hard ones, Jace, the hard ones. All right. Here we go. He's choosing a new one. All right. Namor. Is he DC or is he Marvel? All right. You got to choose one. Five seconds. <laughs> All right. You're going with Marvel. You guys are going with DC. And the answer is? It's Marvel. Huh? Yes. All right, it's okay. I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, it's not Aquaman, that's Namor. All right, next, last one, last one. You guys ready? All right, here we go, last one. This one's hard. Adam. Adam, is he DC or Marvel? All right. You're gonna over here? What? All right. What do you think? Chuck, you gotta choose a side. Which side are you thinking about? All right, you guys are pushing into Marvel. That's very kind of you. All right, and the answer is, it's DC. Oh, your, your brother did you wrong. All right, it's okay, it's okay. You know what, everyone wins today, so you guys grab some candy. Grab some candy, here we go. All right. Now, I would toss candy out, but we have had issues in the past with blow pops bouncing off kids' heads, so we've learned. We learned that that's not very advisable. All right, so right now, I want you guys to welcome our next duo, the dynamic duo, Emily and Elijah, as they're gonna teach us our memory verse for today. it on okay we are going to be teaching you our memory verse if you would like to put it on the, the screen yeah our memory verse is going to be second corinthians 5 17. so we're going to say it first and then we're going to have all of you guys say it together and we're going to kind of do a game or what we're going to do is we're going to take away some of the words you have to remember in your minds okay okay guys so let's do it all together read off the uh read off the screen Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Second Corinthians 517. Okay, that was pretty good. I want to see if my side can do it. No, your side's gonna lose. We're gonna do it better. No. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. All ready? Ready? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ. The new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Second Corinthians 5:17. That was yeah, I was really eh. but my side could do it better, right guys? Yeah! Yeah, let's go. Okay. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Uh, yeah, that was really good. Can we redo that? Uh, no, no. Can we 
to redo that? No reduce. No reduce. <laughs> you have to move on. Okay, so this is how it's going to work. We are going to ring this very handy dandy bell. Ooh. Whoa. And oh. a word is going to disappear. <gasps> Can I get a ooh? Ooh. Ah. Ah. Okay, so can you guys say it with the word missing? Okay, Ready? let's all do it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has gone. The old has come. The new is here. Second in Corinthians 5, 17. Okay. I think you messed up. I think I messed up. We said this like 20 yeah. times, and okay. you're the one to mess up. I, I'm sorry, guys. I messed up. But... That doesn't matter because we're going to move on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mess up. You guys messed up, okay? You guys messed me up. But here, let's do this with the another word going. Okay? So restarting it from the top. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new has here. Second Corinthians 5.17. I... Whoa. I'm sorry, guys. My brain is not working right now. We already know that. Yeah. <laughs> but here, let's... Do you think we, they could handle two? Two words? Do you think you guys can handle two? I don't know if I can it's handle two. Over here. Yeah, my side's just better. <laughs> I, that's all I can say. Yeah, so we're going to go one. Oh, that'll work. It's two. <gasps> oh. Ooh. Okay, ready? Okay, from the top. Therefore, Four, if, if anyone is in Christ, Christ the, the new creation, creation has come. come. The old has gone, the new is here. Second Corinthians 5.17. Okay, I got it right that time, and they did too. That was really good, guys. Now, uh, we're gonna get a little crazy. What are you gonna do? Three. I don't know, wait. It, uh, it's too late, Emily. It's too late, press it. Ooh. Ooh. What? <laughs> There's something wrong with that. We can that. talk to him okay. about that later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. From the top, once again, guys, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Second Corinthians 5.17. Okay. Now, we have a couple of words left. So, do you think we should do something about that? Should we get rid of one or two? Two, two. <laughs> I heard a few threes in yeah. there though. You started us off. Start us off. We can't. Okay. We gotta make it like loud. Yeah, yeah. That was. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Okay. okay. You guys ready? You think you got it? Therefore, Therefore if, if anyone, anyone is in Christ, Christ the, the new creation has come. Has come. The that old is gone. Has the new is here. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5.17. Okay, they messed me up. You two right here. No, that was all you guys. I was saying it right. It, okay, you guys are going you know a little what? fast for us. Yeah, move on. Move on. Come on. Whoa. Oh. Okay, that's a little crazy. Ready? <laughs> yeah, you help me out. <laughs> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Second Corinthians 5.17. Okay, that was, that was really You didn't mess up. That's a, there you go. Okay. And now and we're going to try with nothing. Whoa. Whoa. Just pretend you can't see that. Yeah, that's not there. It's not there. You can't see that. Okay. Ready? From the top. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Second Corinthians 5.17. That was good, guys. Give yourself a round of applause. There we go. I'm going to have you all stand up. We, I'm going to show you this uh, motions to this verse. Yeah, so can we have the team verse back up? Can come up and you guys are going to help us Thank do you. it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new. Deep, deep 
jump, jump, everybody If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left And if he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right We're gonna dance, 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 dance in the river Dance, 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 everybody If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left And if he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right We're gonna jump, 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 jump in the river Jump, 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 everybody If he goes to the left Love will lead me through You 
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right. So there I was. I was in seventh grade. I was a, kind of a chubby little kid. It's true. Obviously, certain things I carried on with me into my adulthood. <laughs> but there I was in seventh grade. It was a cold, cold morning at Templeton Middle School. Burr. Very burr. Thank you. And one, while walking to class, I made the unfortunate mistake of stepping on some very frozen water, a.k.a. ice. And when I fell... I fell in such a way that would, would, if you know me, falling from ladders, falling from high heights. I am skilled and fl very flexible and very agile. And so while I fell, I, I caught myself with my left elbow. Now, I might have screamed, ouch. I was a seventh grader and I didn't know the Lord, so I could have said other things, but I think it was ouch. I really think I went, ouch. And then I proceeded to do what every teenage boy would do. My arm hurts. So the first logical thing I did was, I'm going to do a push-up. And if I could do a push-up, my arm is going to be okay. All right, now once again, I was a chubby kid. I don't know if I've ever done a push-up at this point. So I get down on the ground and I push it on the ground and I'm like, I'm like ah, it, it hurt. So I call my mommy because uh, I'm in seventh grade. And, you know, I knew it was going to be a cold morning that day. You know how I knew that? Because on my way to school, I rode my bike. And the, the, this part of my hair froze on the way. Do you ever happen to you? So cold that your, 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 your luscious locks just freeze in the cold air on my bike ride. It, I'm not joking. That really happened. All right? I'm not sermonizing. This is true. So my hair froze. I slipped on ice. I fell. I called my mom. And so she took me to the hospital, to the emergency room, where I found out morphine and myself do not bode very well together, that I very much get very sick and very uncomfortable. It was not a pleasant... I mean, I had like toast that morning, and then the, the hospital had my toast later that morning. But I found that, uh, that I had to have surgery. And so here's a picture up on screen of, of me. All right, look, look, I told you I was a chubby kid. So uh, just, so far left, obviously I'm the one with the cast. You were gonna go, like, I was just looking for the chubby kid. Look for the cast first, then identify I was a chubby kid, okay? So uh, far left, that's me, my stepbrother Ryan, my stepdad Jack, my mom, I think she's looking at me going like, I can't believe how much the arm's gonna cost. You look at her facial expression, she is not happy. Uh, my, my brother Josh is right here on the right, and that's my sister Christy. And so uh, I had to have the surgery and I had to have two pins put in my arm. And, uh, and here's the, you would think that's the worst part. That's not the worst part of me uh, breaking my arm. The worst part was I never even got a cool cast. You guys, you know, like the cast, people get to sign, you get to walk around school, like, check it out, check it out, like, go and sign. Uh, there was a kid at school the other day who broke his arm and he was like charging people five bucks to, to sign his cast. I'm like, no, you give me $5 to sign your cast. Obviously, he forgot who I was. So while we're, uh, so I'm in the hospital. I get this cast. I don't get the fun cast. I get this like plastery thing. So here's what I remember very specifically. Run, I remember my mom taking care of me. All right, that was important. I remember my sister taking care of me when I went and visited her uh, and I still have the cast on. She took care of me. But I also remember this very specific thing that while I was in the hospital, my dad brought me a couple of comic books, and let's see, let's see, hold on. I think we're good. All right, hold on, I'm, I just gotta make this phone call. All right, Bailey, it's secure, bring it in. All right, 
church. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. really so while I was in the hospital I got two comic books now sadly I don't remember what one of them was which must not have been a good comic book because um, I remember this one this one I've kept it was my first comic book ever I'm just getting sweaty just just wanting to touch this glorious comic book it's not even a first edition like, all my other comic books that might actually be worth money could burn to the ground. But this one means so much to me. It's, it's been with me for so long. So here it is. I'm going to show it to you. And then before service is over, Bailey, you need to come back and secure this so we can get it back in the vault. Okay? All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. See? Ooh. Ah, uh, now it's up on screen so you could see see it because I would not let you touch this whatsoever. Um, my kids were allowed to read it, but they had to wear gloves, right? It's, uh, it's not even like probably that expensive or that important of a comic book, but in that moment when I broke my arm and I got hurt and I'm sitting there and this comic book was like, this is the coolest thing. I love this comic book. This is my favorite comic book of all time. And from that point on, I started... I started like collecting comic books. I started reading about superheroes. And there was something about this character, Darkhawk, that really just kind of made it cool because he went from like a, just a teenager, a regular teenager. Now in the comic book, he was kind of a fit teenager. So I didn't really like associate with him in that category. But I love the idea of that his story was in an abandoned, creepy carnival, right? He finds this amulet and then he, when he activates it, he becomes Darkhawk. He with this, these cool muscular powers, this, ra this grapple claw, he could glide. It was, it, was pretty, it was pretty dope. It really was, right? Or as the kids like to say, it was popping. Right, Emily? Right? <laughs> it was popping. <laughs> Enough people say it, Emily. Enough people say it. And so, well, it was just cool because he, he would just, in a moment's notice, he would be just a, a simple teenager doing simple things. I mean, having simple, I mean, I wouldn't say his life was simple, like his dad got in, involved in some gangs or some like mafia or, I mean, it's a whole backstory. But I just remember it was really cool that he went from just his normal teenager and then he was transformed into this super strong, confident being where he would fight crime. And sometimes he fought crime along Spider-Man. That's kind of a big deal. That's kind of a big deal. All right, Bailey. I'm ready. Let's, let's secure this in the vault. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I was thinking about uh, transformational. And I, I was thinking about the stories of, one, I think about how God transforms our lives and changes pretty much for the moment we, we encounter who he is. He's doing this amazing work, this transformational work in our lives of who we are and what we do. And so I thought about the story of Peter. You guys know Peter. Peter is pretty cool. Uh, you can put it up there, Jace. Peter was just a simple fisherman doing simple fisherman stuff until one day he meets Jesus. Now, and like any story, when anyone met Jesus, their lives were changed and transformed, whether it was for the good or for the worse. Maybe someone didn't like Jesus, so their life was changed, but not for the better because they chose a different path. But people who encountered Jesus and decided to follow him, their lives were changed and transformed from that point on. And it was pretty cool. So I'm going to open up our Bible. And if you want to follow along real quick, let's talk about Peter. Peter is pretty cool because when Peter started following Jesus, he would go wherever Jesus went, and he would learn from Jesus. And although you think just being just right there with Jesus in the, in the early part of his ministry was, was powerful to him, it didn't, didn't really click for him until much later. So fast forward, Jesus says, I am going, like, I got to go to the cross. My time here is almost done. And um, I'm going to leave you. So it's, it's, this is all happening. This is all moving forward. And so Jesus tells Peter, you are going to deny me three times. 
three times. And of course, Peter's like, no, Lord, I would never, ever do something like that. I love you, Jesus. I would never deny you before anyone. Now, if you know the story. Now, Peter was sitting in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You were also with Jesus of Galilee, she said. This is out of Matthew chapter 26, verse 70. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he says. And they went on to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow's with Jesus. And he says, I do not know him. And then after a little while, those standing there went up to Peter again. And surely you are the one who was with Jesus. And he says, I do not know that man. How do you go from a moment of like calling on the Lord, I'll do anything for you. And then all of a sudden denying him three times. That's pretty a big deal. You're like, I thought Peter was like being transformed. Do you know that when I started becoming a Christian, my life didn't really have a lot of definitive like boom moments, but it was like a process. You guys ever feel that way? As you follow Jesus, it's like a process. It's not a cut, dry, black, white right now and not later. It's like, it's, you're learning. You're learning more about what Jesus, you hear about his love, you hear about what he did, and then you, your life kind of like starts to tweak and change a little bit. And so Peter denies Christ, and immediately a rooster crowed, and then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. So Peter, we're talking about transformation, all right? And I'm not talking about someone who is transformed from being a fisherman to being a follower of Jesus. I'm not talking about that. How about this transformation that happens next? It goes from, G from Peter denying Christ to his transform transformation into proclaiming Christ. So you fast forward, right? Uh, he denies Jesus. Then he, then he uh, encounters Jesus after Jesus dies, and he's buried, and he's resurrected, and he meets Jesus along the way, and he, Jesus like totally restores him, encourages him, loves him, forgives him. And then on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 1, on the day of Pentecost, the believers are all in the upper room. And while they're in the upper room, the Holy Spirit comes fills them with the Spirit, they begin speaking in tongues. And then some people started hearing their own language. People were hearing their own language and their own, and their own words coming out of, these own, out of these men's mouths. And of course, at this time, there's a lot of people gathering and a lot of people listening, a lot of people um, in, experiencing the city and a lot of different cultures, a lot of different languages. And all of a sudden, everyone could start understanding them, which is like only a Holy Spirit thing. So then, here's where the transformational comes. That's what I love. Peter goes from denying Christ to proclaiming Christ. He goes from being ashamed and embarrassed and scared, and then he transforms into being bold and confident and not giving a rip about what anyone else thinks because he loves Jesus. So it goes on this. So then people are like, I think these guys had too much to drink. I think they're, it's kind of early in the morning. Those mimosas shouldn't be hitting that hard, right? And and or orange juice, boys and girls, orange juice. And so uh, they, he goes, they, they think that they're drunk. So they go out and he says, so he stands up for everyone. He gets, he gets excited and he just starts to proclaim Christ. Like with a boldness that just not too long ago, in a boldness not too long ago that he was afraid and he was terrified and he denied and he denied and he denied. And yet here he's like, men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourself know. But everything we knew about Jesus, everything we learned, everything we saw, everything that we experienced, guess what? It's true. He is who he said he was. He did what he said he'd do. And you can put your trust and you put your confidence in him in that. So in Acts chapter 2, it rolls down to this where he says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all those who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God has called. What I love about that story, he goes from denying in a courtyard to proclaiming and 3,000 people are baptized 
and add that day to their numbers. Huge transformation. It's nothing Peter did. You know, when I, when I first came to this church 24 years ago, I sat like right over here during a Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flame play. And although I knew God was doing something in my life as we were like, as I was experiencing his love and, and understanding more about who he was and, and really him speaking to my spirit, I sat there and during this play at the very end, they gave like this opportunity to stand up and make a decision to follow Christ, right? It's kind of like a public declaration of like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And I remember doing it, although I, I was a very shy kid, in the last 24 years, God has done something pretty awesome by changing my attitude, changing my heart, changing my mind, making me qu less quiet and more obnoxious right, in all things, right? I'm like, I'm so, I'm so quiet. I was such a little wallflower. I kept to myself. And then I was like, uh, we, the first day we did our kids' church, and we had a crazy hair day. I wouldn't let them touch my hair. I went, whoa, 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 that's my hair. It was a new style. And it wasn't, you know, a couple years later as Christ was doing his thing in my heart, in my life, that all of a sudden I'm like shaving my head for crazy hair day. Like, I don't care. It's just hair. It'll grow back. It just, like, just leaning into the transformational process that God did. So I have this glove here. And what I love about this glove is, you guys recognize this from the movies? All right, now I painted, I changed the, uh, the color of the stones because this is Thanos' glove from the movie Avengers, right? But on the stones, I changed them to be the wordless book. Have you guys ever heard of the wordless book? Uh, the wordless book is pretty cool because if you have to do a book report, I mean, it'd be nice to do a book report on, on a book that doesn't have words, right? I mean, you could write anything, right? And that's not necessarily true, but what's cool about this is that each color means something when it comes to the gospel. Because our, our faith fact, Rosie, is this. It's what Jason says, the power of the gospel transforms and changes lives, right? If I remember it correctly. Jace, my faith fact. <laughs> I had it memorized up until five seconds. Anyway, we are transformed by the gospel. Thank you. We are transformed by the gospel. And so that's what these colors represent, represents the color of the gospel. So I'm going gonna, gonna to explain it to you. And then we're going to sing one more song. And what I love about the song, it's one of my favorite songs. And it's going to be your moment to stand up and in a fun, energetic way, say, I follow Jesus. But check it out. I'm going to give you the abbreviated version today. The Yellowstone, the yellow color represents heaven. A perfect relationship with God. That from the very beginning, that's what God wanted. When he created the earth and he placed us here, he wanted a perfect relationship. He walked in the garden with Adam and he would, they would talk and they would converse. And it wasn't until... That day where sin entered the world in the Garden of Eden, that's the dark stone, where sin entered in the world, and from that point on, we were estranged and we were far off from God. The very perfect relationship, you know, this the yellow one represents gold or heaven, like a perfect opportunity, a moment to be with God and just in sync with Him. But then sin entered the world. You guys want to know what sin is? Emily, what's sin? So it's kind of like a pretty, pretty simple list, but it covers pretty much everything. And the thing is, we sin every day. Raise your hand if you're a sinner. All right, good. All right. If you didn't raise your hand, it's okay, because you're still a sinner. It's, it's, I'm, I'm not calling it. I'm just, it's what the Lord does. But the truth is, is the Bible tells us, for all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, right? Like, we're all imperfect. We all make mistakes. We all struggle with something. But the cool thing is, is if God just said, yeah, I'm sorry, that's... Sucks to be you. You should really fix that. We can't fix it, but God does. And how do you fix it? He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And that's the, that's the red stone. Red stone. That Jesus died on the cross for us to take the, the weight of our sin, of all those things that we think, all the things that we say, all the things that we do or don't do, do not please God. He takes all that upon him and he takes it upon him and then he does something pretty awesome, and he forgives us. He forgives us for all the bad things we do. He casts it as far as the east is to the west. They'll never meet, never know each other. Christ died for us. So that then the white stone says that we could, so we could be pure. So that we could be clean. So that darkness, that darkness, that sin doesn't have to rule us or, or hinder us when we come close and, and have a relationship with God. 
And then the green stone. I got two other stones on here. The green stone is, is about growth. It's what we do is after we learn who Jesus is, we start to grow. We start to know more about him. It's really hard to forget things about Jesus. I know we forget maybe what the Bible says, but it's really hard in your spirit to go, I know God does this. I know Jesus this, but then you, you walk away. It's hard to. And so this represents growth and, and the work that he's doing in our hearts and in our lives. And then the blue is just, it talks about baptism. It's when we proclaim our faith, when we boldly stand up and we tell people that I have decided to follow Jesus. So I love, I love this, these colors because it represents the gospel, the good news, because we know what? What's our, what's our faith point? Jace, our faith point says that we are transformed by the gospel. Who you are when you first encounter Jesus is not who you are today. Even if you encountered Jesus this morning at a Starbucks drive through right? You're not the same now. God is doing something in you and through you. So we're, this is what we're going to do. Worship team, let's come back up. Peter was transformed because of Jesus. Peter didn't take any classes or didn't do any schooling. He didn't do, any, he didn't do anything special outside. He spent time with Jesus. He messed up. He denied Jesus. He saw, he saw Jesus die on the cross. Jesus restored him. And then, and then, Jesus boldly proclaims the gospel, the good news that is Jesus. What I just shared with you that he loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He does not want you far off. He, does, he wants you close to him. And he made a way for that. That salvation is a free gift of God. So here's what we're going to do. The Bible says we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our heart that God raised from, from the dead, we will be saved. Amen? So let's do this. Bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Close our eyes, please. God, we confess with our mouth that Jesus, you are Lord, and we believe in our heart that, God, you raised him from the dead. We believe in the transformational work of the gospel. We don't become transformed so we may benefit financially or physically, Lord. We do it because it's a work you are doing in our lives. We will reap the benefits and we will encounter your love and we will, we will be changed and transformed forever. But God, it's the work you are doing. So we thank you for that free gift that you give us. Nothing we can earn, nothing we could pay for. There's no coupon code, God. It's just a work that you did. And I pray for each and every one, Lord. Those that are starting their, their journey and those who have followed you for years, continue, continue to guide us and direct us. Continue to remind us the power of the gospel. And so God, that when we leave here, at lunch, at work, at school. We don't have to be ashamed of the gospel because we believe it's the power of salvation. We believe it changes and transforms lives. And it brings people back to you. We love you, God. And we thank you for this. And so right now, God, we are going to sing a very animated and fun song. One of our favorites in, in Legacy Kids that, um, that will follow Jesus. So we're going to stand, Lord, and we're going to proclaim that we're going to follow you through emotions and through singing. This is our response. This is our desire. That through the roads of life, wherever we go, whatever we do, God, we, may we remember that you are for us, that you are with us. God, that you are leading us in and all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's stand up and have some fun with the last song as we follow Jesus. Down the road we go It's really rather 
better on We can play it safe and slow Or fly through life with God I don't know about you And everyone's going that way I just wanna be free So I'm gonna walk by faith I'm following Jesus I'm following Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm following Jesus, Jesus. I'm following Jesus, Jesus. I'm following Jesus. All right, one last time, our memory verse for today, all of us together, one, two, three. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Ladies and gentlemen, all the time, all the time, live in that new creation, have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Enjoy some candy on the way out because you didn't get enough this last week.